If you clicked on this video, chances are you played Spider-Man 3 on PC, PS3 or Xbox 360. But did you know that there were three other completely different versions of Spider-Man 3? And before you ask, no, there was no N-Gage one this time, and thank goodness for that. So I decided to send my wife back to her parents so that I could play through every single version of Spider-Man 3. So to kick things off, let's pick up the GBA and see how Spider-Man ventures on this old piece of hardware. Honestly, this was a lot more fun than I expected. It is a very simple side-scrolling affair, but it seems like the devs learned from the failings of Spidey's last outing on the system. It's by no means a masterpiece, but the gameplay is simple and pretty fun. It doesn't feel like each of your attacks will randomly get interrupted by enemies. Though, to be fair, that's mostly because they are just big bags of meat that just wait to get hit. I mean, look how easy it is to defeat the new goblin in this. Also, did you know that Spider-Man has a brand new power? Now he can turn civilians into keys to get through locked doors. I also really liked what they did with the black suit in this game. Instead of just switching in and out at will, it acts as more of a power-up. Fill up your rage meter enough and Spidey will magically transform into the darker, more powerful Symbiote Spider-Man. Also, whilst in this form, instead of damage affecting your health meter, you just revert back to the standard red and blue. This was a nifty way of handling the symbiote suit, but honestly, aside from this, there really isn't much else going on. It's simple and it's fun, and in this case, I think that's enough. And now let's grab out our styluses and play through Spider-Man 3 on the Nintendo DS. Unfortunately, whilst the GBA version improved from the previous game, this one did the exact opposite. Spider-Man 3 on the Nintendo DS went full gimmicky, now forcing the use of the touchscreen to do just about anything. That's, that's gross. The problem here is that, as we know, the touchscreen hasn't always been super accurate with picking up slightly different movements, which means that oftentimes Spider-Man will do something completely random instead of the desired attack or maneuver. It's also funny to see that this version also makes Harry out to be a complete joke with how easy he is to defeat the first time round. Look at little Goblin Jr. Wanna cry? <gasps> This version of Toby's third film was really tiresome and easily the worst one that I played. So yeah, I'm not going to go on about this any longer. It just isn't worth it. So whilst most of you got the big, expansive, open world of the PS3, 360 and PC versions, back in the day, I was stuck on older hardware and played Spider-Man 3 on the PS2. And to be honest, I much prefer it to its upgraded counterpart, but we'll get to that later. So with Spider-Man 3 on the PS2, the devs seem to rip everything from Spider-Man 2 and just make it a bit more... awkward. The swinging now included a strange timed boost mechanic on the X button, which only worked some of the time, and the standard web attack was replaced with a little web splat. That's it. A tiny web splat. A little disappointing, to say the least. The only other thing that was added here were a ton more loading screens. Want to start a mission? Here's a loading screen. Want to do a quick side quest? Here's a loading screen. Finished some random objective and want to stay where you are? Here's a loading screen for you. This definitely broke up the immersion quite a bit and was more than a bit annoying. Also, those mini games that require you to mash a single button for hours on end can go straight back to where they came from. I mean, I know there are hostages to save, but I seriously don't think my thumb can hack it anymore. I can't help but laugh at the limited draw distance here as well. One mission tasked me to help a lost boy get back to his mum, and she was literally a couple of steps down the footpath from him. Okay. Also, Mary Jane's voice in this version will make your ears bleed. But he's your best friend, Peter. Deep down, he has to know you'd never do anything to hurt him. <laughs> Stop it. I'm gonna get sick. Shut up! 
Now, this version of the game didn't just come out on PS2. It was also ported to the PSP. It was really awesome to get the full open world Spider-Man experience on a handheld, especially because it seems like this version of Spider-Man actually had individual fingers, unlike his Spider-Man 2 iteration. A few compromises were made to fit the game onto the system, like a graphics downgrade and a remap of some of the controls, but all in all, it works really well. Finally, this version was also released on the Wii, which was pretty much the same as the PS2 version, just with a lot more in the air. And what? Oh, jeez. Come on. Oh. And now, let's move on to the flagship version of Spider-Man 3. That is for PC, PS3, and Xbox 360. Now, I hadn't played this version till making this video, so this was an entirely fresh experience for me. And for the most part, I did enjoy it. The web swinging feels tighter than ever before, and the combat feels quite fluid. The new spider sense was also quite a nice touch. However, I couldn't help but notice quite a few glaring issues with this version of Toby's third outing. Firstly, is it just me, or is this one of the most empty open worlds ever made in a video game? I mean, the various environments often just feel so lifeless. And I must ask, why did the devs decide to put the first fight between Peter and Harry right in front of a whole bunch of civilians? It is literally the one part of the movie where they could have opted for an empty area. Though, the movie still did this better. Also, why were there so many quick time events? I mean, I can understand it for those moments when you are under pressure, but the fact that it is used for moments when you are just casually swinging through a sewer definitely felt unnecessary. But do you know which scene deserves a quick time event? The main Spider-Man story also seems to have been really stretched out, because rather than having a noticeable progression system like in Spider-Man 2, you just have to keep plotting through random missions till you finally reach an actual story objective. And yes, MJ is just as annoying in this version too. Thanks for coming. You're so much faster than a cab. That's what she said. <laughs> I did enjoy playing through this version of Spider-Man 3, but like I said, it can't seem to escape some of its biggest issues. Uh... I didn't know what to expect playing through all these versions of Spider-Man 3, but honestly, it was pretty positive for the most part. But did you know that I played through every version of Spider-Man 2 as well? Click on the video on screen to check it out. Until next time, I've been Sam, and like Spider-Man, you've been spectacular, and we will catch you in the next video.